Soul Level 1, or Blood Level 4, is when you take an unleveled character through From Software's Soulsborne games and do not invest any stats into the character. Only weapon upgrade levels, stat boosting equipment, and magic or consumable items may be used to beat the game for an official run to take place. I'm here today to ask the question of which level 1 run is the hardest between Demon Souls, Dark Souls Trilogy, Bloodborne, and Elden Ring. Before we get into this, make sure to follow my Twitch channel in the pinned comment for daily live streams. In classic tierless fashion, we will start with the easiest game and finish with, in my personal experience, the hardest. The All Remembrances run on Elden Ring features similar amounts of bosses to the All Bosses runs of all the other FromSoft games, so I'm going to be using that as the comparison as it fits the difficulty range rather than 165 bosses for the whole game. First up to the plate is Demon Souls. Royalty is the starting class in Demon Souls that you need to choose for a proper level 1 run. It's ironically considered one of the strongest choices for a starting class due to the Silver Catalyst, Rapier and Buckler combo, Mana Regenerating Fragrant Ring, and the Mana Expanding Silver Coronet. You're able to use reliable and downright nutty magic on this character class without having to upgrade the character at all. Enchant Weapon is available early game and paired with the Secret Dagger for low material requirements via upgrading and insane critical damage, you already have a setup for the rest of the game. Pair this with the Ring of Devout Prayer, Second Chance, and the 60% damage bonus from Morium Blade and Clever Rat's Ring combo. Well, let's just say if you do have significant trouble at this point, then you should probably play My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Demon Souls has very cheesy, gimmick-like boss fights. Aside from Maneaters, Flame Lurker, and False King. But considering your damage is very high, even they will be made much easier. Its boss list to be completed for the entire game is also much shorter than the rest of the tier list, luckily. Next up we have Dark Souls 1. The level 1 starting class for this game is Pyromancer. It comes with Fireball right off the bat, and a hatchet that's fast but kinda sucks, so the plan of action is to immediately grab the Reinforced Club. Until you can get the Twinkling Titanite weapon, Giant Blacksmith's Hammer. For those who don't know, Twinkling Titanite is a much easier and minimal upgrade path. Giant Blacksmith Hammer is also just big, stupid, and fun at the same time. Unfortunately for the best damage output with a melee weapon on the final boss, Gwyn, you will want to have that previously mentioned Reinforced Club and make sure to ascend it to Chaos. Chaos is the highest form of fire damage, and yes, I do agree it's weird that the Lord of Cinder's weakness is fire. Rings for this run will be Red Tear Stone if you want a 50% damage increase for Glass Cannon damage at the cost of your survival similar to the Morian Blade and Rat Ring setup that I mentioned in Demon Souls. Or you can go the safer route and spec Havel's Ring for heavier armor, you big goober baby. I guess even Ring of Favor and Protection alongside Havel's can be the ultimate defensive measure if you want to stack up more equip load and survive, but I prefer Darkwood Grain Ring since it allows you to roll much easier and makes a difference when up against the hardest bosses. For Darkwood Grain Ring, you'll probably need an equip load of about 25% of your total. Speaking of boss fights though, this game has quite a few to mention regarding level 1. Ornstein and Smo. Four Kings. Gwyn, the Lord of Cinder, with and without parries. Sanctuary Guardian. Artorius of the Abyss. Manus, Father of the Abyss. And Black Dragon Calamit are all epic grinds on the first ever level 1 run to embark on. Good luck. Following Dark Souls 1 is the newest child of the trilogy, Dark Souls 3. This is part of the tier list where the difficulty genuinely increases a good bit. Deprived is the starting class, and in this one they didn't even give you clothes. Well, it's kinda sus, but okay. In Dark Souls 3, they decided to be rude and take away 30% of the 50 damage bonus that Red Tearstone gives you on Dark Souls 1. But still, they left it in to give you some kind of hope. 
At the very least, there's four ring slots in this game, so you have a couple extra to work with. The staple rings I'd recommend are Lloyd Swords Ring for 10% damage bonus at full health, or Red Tier for 20% at low health in place of it. Chloranthi Ring for stamina regen bonus, replaced by Frostbite when fighting specifically Sister Frida is pretty damn good. Flynn's Ring if you have low equip load for extra damage, but Havels in place of it when using heavy armor, and Karthus Blood Ring for extra and vulnerability frames if preferred. Upgraded versions of some of the rings can be found in the DLC content as well. I'd throw in Hornet's Ring as an honorable mention if you want higher critical attacks after obtaining it post-Champion Gundir. For weapon choice, you can use a lot of different things in this if you use stat boosting gear and rings. But I always prefer the raw infused broadsword over everything else for its speed and consistency. Pair that with the appropriate pine resins depending on the current boss fight and you have a great setup. I recommend grabbing the Herald and Fallen armor sets for those who prefer surviving bigger attacks. The most insane bosses on this run make up a significant portion of the game, ranging from base game right into the DLC. You got Pontiff Sullivan, Dancer of the Boreal Valley, Dragon Slayer Armor, Champion Gundyr, Osiris, Nameless King, Sister Frida, Grave Tender, Demon Prince, Dark Eater Madeir. Slave Knight Gale, and of course Soul of Cinder. I found all of them quite challenging on my first run, and I'm sure a lot of you did as well. On the same tier as Dark Souls 3, right beside it is none other than Elden Ring. This game skipped right over Deprived and goes to Wretch as the starting character. And still no clothes. Damn. They really be shortchanging us out here. Since the level 1 character build can be approached in multiple different ways, I'm going to focus on what I did for my first level 1 playthrough, which wasn't that far off the meta at the time. I used the Radagon Sword Seal, Ritual Sword Talisman, the Axe Talisman, Jar Shard Talisman, and eventually dabbled with the Blue Dancer Charm. The Physic Flask was a rotation of Strength Knot, Spiked Cracked, Stamina, and Opaline Bubble Crystal Tears, with the main weapon of choice being the Serpent Hunter. I only used the Starting Club to kill Godskin Noble early game and was able to quickly get the Spear found in Rikard's Arena upgraded to plus 9 within the first small chunk of the game. For anyone that doesn't know, you can do this easily by getting various somber stones throughout Kaled, and also on the way to Godskin Noble, pair that with the first four upgrade stones from EG, and you're ready to go. The main difficulty came into play with Millennia, as I had never killed her with ease before. My first playthrough took four and a half hours, having done her close to the last in the entire game. Though I did only decide to do parries on her, Millennia took up a significant amount of the time it took to beat level 1. Moog was pretty brutal as well, along with Placidasax, Godfrey, Radagon, Elden Beast, and Gideon as honorable mentions. Gideon's also just a straight up dickhead. Screw you, Gideon. Aside from that, this run's difficulty is ranked higher due to the fact that a regular player going through the same experience, just like myself, without having speedrun experience, nor having completed a hitless run just before starting up this, would be in a completely different situation. I think it's fair to say my previous runs helped the level 1 attempt quite a bit, but in other games on this list, I usually would just jump straight into a base level playthrough immediately before any zero damage, hitless, or speedrun even crossed my mind. Moving up to the next tier, we have Bloodborne. The only game on this list that technically isn't even a level 1 character class. Its lowest option is level 4, commonly referred to as BL4 or Blood Level 4 in the community. 
This is one of the hardest runs I remember doing only after playing my first playthrough and Deathless. To top it all off, Bloodborne gives you clothes, but it calls you a waste of skin. FromSoft really is throwing some low blows to us masochists at this point. Luckily in Bloodborne you get to choose the starting weapon once reaching the Hunter's Dream, which is great because the Sock Cleaver is one of, if not the best weapon in the entire game for its speed. Serrated damage bonus against beasts and the transform attacks doing decent limb damage to big bosses is a huge plus. Unfortunately, even the Sock Cleaver isn't enough to defend you against the likes of Yarnum foes alone. You're going to want to get the 18% blood gems for your weapon and 22% later on from the Winter Lanterns in the Fishing Hamlet. If you're more patient than me, there's a glyph that allows you to get 23% according to some forum I was reading, but the mainstay will be anywhere from 18 to 22% gems. Fire and Bolt Papers paired with the Holy Grail, that is Beast Blood Pellets, can allow you to become a base cannon in no time at all. Unfortunately, due to the higher amount of damage you'll be taking from the downside of using the Beast Blood Pellets, it's probably not worthwhile until you know the moves of the boss fights inside out, so you can have a much quicker chance at downing them. Anti-Clockwise Metamorphosis for Stamina, and a Claw Mark Rune for Visceral Damage are my favorites when running the level 4 build, but an honorable mention is switching to Communion for farming Blood Vials between encounters. The baddies on this run are Shadows of Yarnum, German the First Hunter, Ebriatus, Daughter of the Cosmos, Ludwig the Accursed, Lady Maria, Orphan of Kos, and Lawrence. This game without the knowledge of movesets and just sheer lack of survivability during the higher ranked fights is bananas, especially with your regular weapons damage not being enhanced by the beast blood pellets. Another thing to note in Bloodborne is that, no matter a leveled character or not, the amount of defense you get from armor sets is not that great. At last we have finally made it to the top tier, and if this wasn't including all bosses in the game, I'd be tempted to rank Dark Souls 2 lower than 3. The enemy complexity and health pools are slightly lower than normal, but since we're doing all bosses, let me tell you. This one is scary. The main reason being, there was a genius that decided to make invulnerability frames a scalable stat on the character, and you do not start with as many as you would in all the other games. Also, we can't directly level stats on level 1, so that sucks. By the way, there's 42 bosses to kill. Starting off with Deprived Class yet again, you can see as the tier list progresses, FromSoft really doesn't want you to have legitimate weapons or warm clothes as a level 1 character. Ring of Blades is a must for this character build, as it noticeably increases damage. Feel free to get the better version later on as well, from the dual pursuer fight. Chloranthy Ring makes a comeback, and is needed more than ever for stamina regen, as the base regen and consumption is absolutely garbage. If you want to be a glass cannon, you can go with the 20% damage bonus on red tier stone like Dark Souls 3, but because the bosses aren't as beefy health-wise, I wouldn't bother for a casual playthrough. The dragon rings all the way up to the third dragon ring are useful for defensive play paired with various different armors, but I'd still opt for the stone ring because the bonus dagger can help at times. While unstated in the item's description, holding the Handmaiden's Ladle on your offhand increases vitality and endurance by 1, and adaptability by 2, while decreasing dexterity by 1. By far the most important thing right when you start the game is to obtain that soup ladle. You also want Simpleton's Ring from the second DLC as soon as you can get it, because it'll raise your ADP enough to get extra invulnerability. Lastly, having Flynn's Ring from DLC 1 on hand can pair well with an aggressive lightweight setup, as it boosts your damage while the equip load is low, like in Dark Souls 3. The Rapier and the Mace seem to be popular choices for this run, as well as keeping a light crossbow upgraded on hand. Bosses that are very challenging in this run include Throne Watcher and Defender, King Vendrick, Alana Squalid Queen, Sin, both Smelter Demons, Fume Knight, Sir Alone, Ava, King's Pets Lud and Zalin, 
and most importantly, the Ivory King. As usual guys, if you did not agree with the order of this tier list, please comment below what you think would be the ideal order for your level 1 playthroughs if you've completed them, or if you've just watched them as well. Like, comment, subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, check out my Twitch stream, we're live daily, join our Discord if you want to also keep up to date with the community as well, and have a great day, thank you.